Hello, my name is Stephen York. I am the pastor of the United Methodist Church in Stonington, Maine. Today I am preaching on finding light in the midst of the dark night. I take the poetry of Wendell Berry, the story of Isaiah 58 in the oppression of people and the light that comes from doing the right thing and intertwine them with the words of Jesus that say, I am not to hide my light under a bushel, but put it out there and reminding all of us that we are the light of the world. I hope that today, as you listen to this message, that you will find hope and light in the midst of your dark night, because it is in that single gleam of light in the midst of the darkness and in the light of the stars that we are able to find our way home. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy today's message. I was minding my own business about <coughs> seven o'clock, no, five o'clock last night. <coughs> And we were doing what millions of Americans were doing about that hour, which was making homemade turkey soup. I had successfully taken the meat off of the wonderful turkey, which I thought needed a prize for being such a stellar turkey, to be honest with you. And there was a whole platter of meat left. And so Catherine and I collaborated in the building of a soup. We had just got the pot on the stove when at five o'clock the power went out. <laughs> they they uh, flickered three times because I think the power company is Trinitarian, not Unitarian. And so by the second time, I said to Catherine, get the candles. She said, well, where's the flashlight? And I said, well, I think it's there in the drawer. And so we got the candles lit, and because we had so many candles left from Thanksgiving, some of which didn't even get lit at Thanksgiving because we had so much food on the table for everybody that we forgot to light some of the candles. So I was grateful. So we're sitting there now, and you know it turns dark about 3 o'clock in the afternoon anyway. <laughs> and it becomes almost like that sermon I preached two weeks ago, are we going to create heaven or hell with what we've got? And so <clears throat> the grayness of the day, and then the lights going out on the planet about 3 or 3.30, so we put on the lights, and Catherine and I had been reading before we started the turkey soup a wonderful novel by, by Wendell Berry called Jaber Crow. I'll talk about that another time. So we had a wonderful afternoon, and the lights were on, and we were kind of making this homemade soup with anticipation it was going to be a good one. I thought we'd hit a home run with the bases loaded with this thing. So. <clears throat> The power goes out. Now we're sitting in the kitchen and uh, trying to, everything is now off course because how do you read to each other or do anything when you have no power and supper's on the stove and it's not cooking? <laughs> so in desperation, Catherine says to me to, to make conversation because we're both off track by now. You know how it is when your plans are messed up, don't you? So, <laughs> Catherine says to me, I tell you, honest to God, this is the truth. She says to me, what are you preaching on tomorrow? <laughs> I said, you're not going to believe this, but it's in the newspaper and I can prove it to you. I'm preaching on finding the light when the, when, in the midst of the dark night. <laughs> and she said, you're kidding me. And I said, no. And if you don't believe me, 
it, look at the, look at the uh, newspaper in the island advantage. <laughs> and we looked at each other and laughed, and I said, now I've got my introduction to the sermon worked out. <laughs> the influence of life is so critical in our lives. There are millions of people who struggle with SAD, S-A-D, which is signal affective disorder, where light deprivation impacts their moods. Some people actually buy special light bulbs for their lamps and sit near them for short periods of time so that they can make the adjustment. But there is something about light and darkness at this season that can begin to affect us. The days are shorter and the nights seem long. There are some nights when I look at Catherine and say certainly it must be at least 9 o'clock and it's only 5.30. It just feels Finding the light in the midst of the dark night is sometimes not an easy task, particularly if you are unprepared. Fortunately, yesterday, Wes Zachary had put the flashlight back where he had borrowed it from two days before, and we knew where the candles were, and I think we had been given the gift of a book of matches from the... Uh, Harbor View store, so we were in great shape. But getting the light on in the midst of the darkness is an art form here on the island. And how true that was for the people who were walking in darkness. Not a darkness of natural light or deprivation of natural light. <laughs> But throughout the Hebrew scriptures, we talk about how people had a sense of darkness, of not knowing where they were going. They were oppressed. They had life circumstances which caused them to feel very much in the dark. Many of us have experienced this feeling, which has been best expressed by the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda, who has a poem called Clarity fishing for clarity, and how we sit on the well of darkness. It's like we're fishing for clarity, hoping to find some answer to a complex problem that we have. And he talks about how much patience.